day is helping the kids to figure out where it is we need to do, um, especially going back to what we know about learning loss, that it affects kids, um, low-income students, uh, more than students uh, from higher economic dem demographics. So we're, it's going back to our mission. It's going back to what we feel is best for the kids. So as part of this is we're trying to come up with a summer program. So we're not asking all faculty to do this. This will be a part of a, a separate group that wants to do this. So that wants to be a part of this. Um, you know, faculty, yes, we end mid to late June, grades, professional development. Um, but then there's going to be in the whole other summer program session uh, to assist the kids. And they'll be, look, be on the lookout for uh, those that want to be involved with that uh, portion, summer portion, to ensure that um, the learning loss is kept to minimal. And I'll turn it to Mary Kay. Um, I want to make a couple comments on that. Thanks uh, for letting me join your meeting today. And I really miss seeing all of you uh, in person. I guess Zoom is our is our substitute right now. Um, but I, I just want to echo some of Tom's words. And first of all, I want to begin by telling you, I mean, I think that all of you, I've just been, Liz and, and Tom have been looping me into uh, the work that you've been doing, the work, the PD that you've been engaging in, in order to better meet the needs of your students. You know, we, it's an understatement to say that this is a challenging time, but I think that the most important thing uh, that we need to talk about is how, how do we push our kids toward, and uh, uh, Nisha, I see your, Nia, I see your hand is raised. Well, uh, if you, uh, we, if we can wait, or do um, you want to say something now? Um, yes, I'd like to say something now because the reality is that these students, the juniors, did not have three teachers for more than half of the year. And based on the information that was presented with learning loss and all of these different things, we're requiring these kids to take an additional final and all of these assessments when we didn't give them the tools that they needed to begin with. And that's the same also for the freshmen. They did not have two teachers. And I just don't, I know that you guys are planning on doing a summer session for them, but at no point in time was remediation ever put in place for the kids so that they could even be prepared to do the online learning. And the majority of them are struggling. And we're having these PDs saying all these things that we want to do for the kids, but the reality is that we never did the things we were supposed to do for them when they were at the school. And now they're lost. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to let Liz and Tom talk about that, but I think the, the idea is... Please the talk idea about is this. Kids, pardon me? I would like them to talk about this. Okay, but let, let me say one thing first, and, and my sense, and you can turn it over to them, is that the idea of giving kids a summative assessment is not to any way shame, humiliate, punish students. The idea is that we simply have to find out what do they know. And, and that's the only way that we can build a plan for ongoing support even in the summer and the coming school year. There may be implications for next year's uh, schedule that would require that we do some double dosing for kids in courses where we know that it, it's a given that they need much more support for us to even assume that they have been uh, working towards college readiness. And I agree there have been definite gaps there. I'll turn it over to Liz and Tom and they can speak as well. Sure. Yeah, so we know, and across Crystal Rays, uh, we know that we're going to need some remediation work. And this summative data and some of the things we're working on to push forward positively is part of that work. Um, so, Nia, thank you for, for, for exposing and, and, and talking about some of those things that we know all Crystal Rays are dealing with. And we know that no, we are this is a different here. situation because when these kids were here over the summer, when I was here, you guys were provided with summative data in regards of the deficits that they had. And they had three periods of downtime without remediation. They're given tutors that are not showing them how to properly do things. And students are being so, Nia, caught for plagiarism. So let's... um. Plagiarism, yes, we can talk about all of no, any academic No, they weren't, why give, they, we, you guys already knew when they came and they were academically behind and you did no, not remediate yeah, why, them. Why don't we, you and I meet at 9.30 when we break up 
and we can talk about some of your ideas going forward. I've already sent you my ideas and you guys already implemented them and did not give me credit for it. So moving forward, only thing I'm asking is that you make parents aware that the students did not have teachers, that they will need to be actively working at remediating their own kids. Outside Great. of and that, I don't have anything else to say. And we'll use some of this data to drive that remediation. Thank you for your time. Okay, so some of the data that we're looking at here are standardized assessment scores, um, standard aligned assessments that we're working on today. Quality, thank you for all of your work in the grade level meeting. We're looking at educator data, um, quality educator data on some of our interventions, and we know that it's a lot of meetings, but thank you for that. Another piece of evidence is our evidence of student growth in grades. Um, so we will be looking at student work, so thank you for your tireless efforts in our class meetings every day. I, we know it's been clunky. Um, we're looking at remote learning engagement, um, some of our wraparound services and attendance and student actions and demographics. So things that we're going forward, this is the data that we're looking at as we approach the summer sessions because we know that we will need to we will need to use the data to drive what our students the learning outcomes and to produce the students that we want going forward, knowing that there's there's been a lot of change. Um, some of that data will drive summer sessions, fall sessions, PD, cross departmental collaboration, so with corporate work study and academics and what that looks like interdisciplinary curriculum and instruction and we will not do this alone we're doing this together as a group um, and some of that interdisciplinary curriculum and instruction work will be around our standards alignment and it all boils down to what we want when we started this journey together and that is a student who's perseverant intellectually for college and the and the workforce thank you so on that note we'll show an example for math thank you jenna for the standard um, work. This is a math exam and final uh, final assessment on, and these are some of the standards that Jenna covered um, that are noted right in her final summative assessment. So polygons, um, geometric measure and dimension. And then from this data, we can say, what did, what did the student capture around these standards? What do they know? Where do we need to fill in the gaps for our our learning um, for summer remediation? So thank you so much um, for putting this together and for all the work you did around curricular realignment. And we know that it's a lot of work and a lot of change. This data um, and your final summative assessment will really push us into how can we how can we react to the pandemic and how can we we deliver and produce the graduates that we would like to produce um, and serve. Thank you. So we're gonna do a quick elbow partner exchange. Um, all of you made an, an instructional engagement goal this week. And if you'd like the demo of the elbow partner exchange, it's a learning.